this man is hanging from the edge of a building, with fire around and below him, and the only person who can pull him up is his twin brother, who is also his worst enemy. Nemesis and Spartan were born legends with great powers, kind of like what you'd see in a DC or Marvel movie, except they couldn't change their appearance or call up a hammer. They were pretty cool, though, but the people in their town didn't think they were. The boys indirectly hurt the people around them with their abilities. It didn't take long for everyone to decide how they felt about the brothers. They had to go. So they came up with a bizarre idea to set their house on fire, putting an end to their parents almost instantly. The twins, however, survived. Years later, Samaritan fought for justice for the innocent, while Nemesis wanted payback from the people who hurt him. And since Samaritan tried to stop his brother from terrorizing citizens, Nemesis forged the only weapon that was powerful enough to defeat him. He challenged Samaritan to a fight. On the night of the fight, a bomb went off, and the brothers were never seen again. We open with Sam watching a video conspiracy about Samaritan being alive, while his mother prepares to go to work. Before she leaves, she instructs him to take out the trash. While Sam is out, he decides to show us his art skills on the trash bin. Spray painting. Who hasn't done that before, right? Soon enough, he sees a strange-looking man named Joe walk towards the bin. That's what you get for defacing a trash can at night in the rain, Sam. Better hide, Sam, or the man is going to eat you up. Just kidding. The man, Joe, only takes an old radio out of the bin and goes back to his apartment. Instead of listening to his teacher the next day, Sam draws Samaritan in his notebook. He must really love that guy. That's probably because they have the same first names. Sam and Samaritan. Eh, what's the difference? He gets home to find an eviction notice, and his door is locked. Since he can't go in, he sits in front of the building to once again, yes, to draw. Joe walks by, carrying a broken radio. But when Sam asks why he has a bad radio, Joe counters by asking why Sam wears a broken watch. Why are you wearing a broken watch? And we learn they both have a strange attraction to non-functioning items. A bigger boy, Jace, walks by and asks Sam to help him break into a house for some money. Not a bad idea since the house is unoccupied and he has just been kicked out of his apartment for being broke. Sam agrees and digs out a box from a wall in the building. They give the box to a man who pays them $40 for it. A guy with purple hair and two other men walk up to them and ask them to distract a store owner so they can steal some tickets from him for some more money. Uh, run away, Sam. They're obviously bad guys. Jace walks away. That's a good boy. Now, Sam, you should do the same. Sam seems to be in desperate need of money, so he agrees to work for them. Bad idea. Well, Sam was able to distract the shop owner long enough for the guys to take two boxes. However, at the hideout, the gang discovers that they picked up the wrong boxes and are going to blame it on Sam when Cyrus, another gang's boss, walks in on them. From this interaction with the boy, it's clear that Cyrus likes Sam. Well, you'd think that Sam would get out of this obvious trap at this point, but he doesn't. Anyway, Cyrus finds Sam's drawings of Samaritan, but he is not a fan. He likes the brother. Cyrus gives Sam some money for helping, and even more money for future help he expects Sam to offer. It's too late for our brother now. Let's take a second to remember his innocent days. Sam uses the money to help his mother pay off the building owner, while Cyrus and his crew receive a huge delivery of firearms. What are they up to with so many explosives? Hmm. The next day, while Sam is walking home, Purple Hair and his guys walk up to him, asking him for money he got from Cyrus the night before. Uh, how would he pay up the money he's already used for rent? Besides, it's my money, is something Sam would have said if he wasn't scared out of his mind. He starts to run away from them, and he almost gets hit by the bus that Joe is riding. The guys catch up to Sam and start beating him up, but Joe comes to the rescue. Joe throws the two guys off with both hands and kicks the leader's sorry self. Purple Hair, on the other hand, attacks Joe with a knife. A bad idea, Purple Hair. Joe bends the steel blade with his bare hands. You just messed with the wrong guy. Sam sees this and gets suspicious. So he spies on Joe through his window later that day. Joe must have had a pretty rough past because what Sam sees would blow your mind. Enjoying the story so far? Please like and subscribe for more jaw-dropping content like this. Do you think Samaritan is alive? 
Do you think Samaritan is Joe? Is Joe Samaritan's son, brother, or just an entirely different hero? Or is he just a normal guy who loves to pick things up from the trash? Please leave a comment below to tell me what you think. Joe has burn scars all over his back. I think we all know what's on Sam's mind at this point. Could this be Samaritan? Well, he's able to connect some dots and make up his mind. Next, we see Sam with a journalist friend of his, telling him about his conviction that the older neighbor next door is Samaritan. The journalist dismisses Sam's thoughts, reminding him that he'd been wrong about the identity of Samaritan in the past. But you didn't see how he beat up the guys yesterday, or how he'd been steel. Thereafter, the journalist shows Sam his back room. It's obvious that the journalist is also a fan. He shows Sam an old hammer that was found after the fight between Nemesis and his brother. It's the hammer that was made by Nemesis to destroy Samaritan. Meanwhile, Cyrus and his boys go on a mission with their explosives. I really thought I'd see some guys walk out of a burning building with style, but Cyrus is not here for the cool superhero walk. He's here for a hammer and a mask. Nemesis hammer and mask. I mean, he literally abandons money for these two items. They must mean so much to him. The next day, Sam breaks into Joe's house and takes a book about Samaritan from his cupboard. What is he thinking? The old man would not realize that his scrapbook is missing? Come on. You know how much Joe loves his scraps. The book convinces Sam that Joe is Samaritan, though. Later on, Joe comes to Sam's house and tells his mother that Sam has his scrapbook, and he wants it back. Get over here. You have something that belongs to this man? Sam's mom is mad at him and apologizes to Joe after making Sam return the book, but Sam is not perturbed. In fact, in his excitement, he tells Joe that he's a fan. Later, Joe asks Sam who he thought he was. Samaritan? Joe denies being Samaritan and is about to walk away when Purple Hair runs him over with a car. Sam is scared and thinks Joe is dead. What is it with this hero and dying? The superheroes we know always survive. I guess Samaritan's nickname should be Easy Target. Oh, wait a minute. Joe doesn't go down so easily. His bones start to adjust themselves in Sam's presence. Kind of in a weird but mind-blowing way. Making Sam have this astounded look. Now, Joe cannot deny it. He is Samaritan. Sam goes back to Joe's apartment with him. Joe's body is bringing out some kind of steam. He explains that whenever he is stressed... His heart can explode if he doesn't get some water in time. Hmm. Thankfully, Joe has some ice cream in his freezer. While he drinks it, Sam narrates how Joe helped his father, who is now dead. Later that night, Cyrus uses his bomb power on us again. This time, he does it to draw some attention. He wears Nemesis' mask and addresses the people who gather. He introduces himself as Nemesis, claiming he wants to start a revolution. To start a revolution! As a result, people start a riot, and of course, a guy records the whole thing. Joe meets Sam the next morning and takes him to a pawn shop in town. A guy tries to bully Joe, and Joe does not fight back. Sam is not too happy with Joe about this, so Joe decides to take it out on the door of the shop. On their way home, Sam asks a couple of questions. You know, the kind you'd ask your favorite hero if you had the chance to meet him or her. If you did, what would your question be? Let me know in the comments below. After a fun day together, Joe collects Sam's broken watch and offers to help him fix it. Sam asks Joe to teach him how to fight. They meet on a roof, where Joe shows him some pretty good moves and teaches him some valuable life lessons. They were having a pretty good time, becoming buds, you could even say. However, when Sam asks Joe what happened to Nemesis on the night of the fight, Joe gets upset and sends Sam home. On his way home, Cyrus drives up to Sam and asks him to join another operation. It's time to pay up your debt, little boy. Sam agrees and follows him. His job? To be a lookout while Cyrus and the crew torture a cop with fire and shoot him in the back right after they let him go. That's cold. <laughs> Classic predatory prey move, though. Make them think they are safe, Cyrus says. Sam watches the whole thing and realizes what he's gotten himself into. Took him long enough, didn't it? Scared, he runs away. As he goes, he sees purple hair and his guys beating up Jace by the road. Is there any night without a violent act in this city? That's what you get when the only hero around is destroyed in a fire, I guess. Thankfully, this time, Joe has given Sam some advice about being brave enough to make a hit to defend himself and run. 
so he hits Purple Hair and his crew, freeing up Chase. But that running part just doesn't come to him quick enough. Poor Sam. Purple Hair and the guys beat him unconscious. They put him in a cart and roll him home, but run away, when Joe looks out at them from his window. Joe rushes Sam to the hospital. Purple is surprised that Joe's alive. He tells Cyrus about Joe, and the rebel is so ready to meet the immortal man who has refused to go down easy. Cyrus sends his boys to bring Joe to him, but Joe is not going with anyone without a fight. While they are fighting, a girl is able to watch him up close. When Cyrus's guys set up a bomb to end Joe, the man grabs the little girl, flips over a car, and saves them both. Now that everyone has witnessed. How would Joe keep up with hiding his true identity now? Well, he goes home and packs his bags. It's time to skip town. Surprising? Yes. As a superhero, shouldn't he stand up to help the city? I guess Joe is not the warrior we assumed he was. As Joe's about to leave, Sam knocks on the door and tells him about Cyrus' activities at the warehouse. But Joe is not interested in helping. You're just as bad as everyone else, a disappointed Sam screams before he leaves. Later that night, Joe is on the news. Can Samaritan be back? Everyone wonders. Hope seems to be felt once again in the city. Little do they know that their Samaritan is about to leave. As Cyrus watches the news, he probably feels threatened. I mean, if Cyrus is posing as Nemesis, and Nemesis's Nemesis is around, wouldn't he need to take down his Nemesis? Okay, that's too many Nemesis, but you get the point. He smashes the TV with his Nemesis hammer. Take it out on Samaritan, buddy, not on the poor old box. The next day, Cyrus takes his gang to Joe's house and shoots the place down. Joe has already skipped town, though, and Sam watches Cyrus from his apartment. It is a silly mistake, if you ask me. He should have run from the moment that he saw Cyrus walk into the house, but it's too late now. Cyrus takes Sam captive, but Sam is sure that Joe will come for him. We see Joe in the train station. He's about to leave when Sam's watch beeps. This reminds Joe of his little friend, and is thankfully enough to make Joe go back. Joe finds Sam's mother on the floor with his house trashed. That's it, Cyrus. Joe has had enough of you. He takes his old bus to meet Cyrus with some rage in his eyes. Cyrus is ready for this fight. His men are already shooting even before Joe gets to him. Mighty Joe smashes the front door with his truck. The men start shooting at him, but a gun will not bring down the mighty Samaritan. Come on, Cyrus, be realistic. You have the hammer. Use it. Joe fights off a lot of the guys before Cyrus goes to him, holding Sam captive. Joe asks Cyrus to fight with him man to man and leave the kids out. But Cyrus reviews because he's a villain and starts to beat Joe with a whip in front of Sam. Then he gets the hammer. Oh yes, the good stuff. He takes a swing at Joe, but Joe catches the hammer with his fist. You see, it turns out Joe is not the good guy. He's the bad guy. And we were wrong all along. Joe is Nemesis. What? Yeah, I also didn't see that coming. Cyrus's bomb goes off that minute, though. The fight continues. Cyrus takes Sam into an elevator in panic. He knows how to destroy Samaritan, but not Nemesis. What is he going to do now that he's stepped onto the dinosaur's tail? He ties Sam up in the burning building and waits for the villain in our story. Meanwhile, Nemesis is beating up other guys pretty badly, and Cyrus definitely has it coming because Nemesis is running to save Sam's life. Cyrus gives the order to his crew to make the city dark and let the riots begin. Wipe the city dark. Why won't he just give up? We know who the real Nemesis is already, and as Sam rightly said, you will never beat him. Nemesis gets to Sam, but Cyrus springs a surprise attack on him. He pushes him to the edge of the burning building, leaving Nemesis hanging there like a thread. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw this scene in The Lion King, but let's move on. Sam manages to break free from where he is tied and hits Cyrus from behind. Nemesis then climbs back up and finishes off the identity theft by throwing him off the edge. We now see that this is exactly how the fight between Nemesis and Samaritan ended. Nemesis' body started to do that steamy bodily thing again. Uh-oh, no one wants to see that man explode. Good thing Sam is there to save his life again. Good job, Sam. Right after getting some water, Nemesis rescues Sam from the fire. Sam tells Joe that he can change, but Joe tells Sam that everyone has good and bad in their hearts. You either choose to be good or bad, 
and right after he says this, he sneaks away, leaving Sam, who walks out of the ambulance and tells the press about his hero, the Samaritan. You remember the journalist who doubted him before? He's now so eager to hear from little Sam. A little late for that, don't you think, Clout Chaser? A little later, Sam's watch beeps. He looks sideways and sees Joe, who gives him a nod and walks away. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button below, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more epic content like this one.